Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. So did you ever buy a knife that you really, really like, um, but you just can't put into words what it is about the knife that you really like? Um, and the fact that there are so many things about the knife that you can understand why some people just would not want that knife, but still you are really happy you got it. Uh, that is the case with this knife for me. This is the Rough Rider Reserve RRR019 Swish. It is a swing guard. That is the easy thing for me to say about the knife, that it is a swing guard and that it is by Rough Rider, it's in the Rough Rider Reserve line. Um, some of the negatives that I can say about the knife right away is this knife goes for like 75 bucks. Uh, that is a lot of money for many people when it comes to a knife out of China. Now there's plenty of other knives out of China that people buy that are $75 and they don't even blink an eye at. But this is a Rough Rider. Even if it is in the Rough Rider Reserve line, $75 is more than what your typical Rough Rider Reserve even goes for. Matter of fact, this is one of the most expensive Rough Rider Reserve knives out there to date. Um, and uh, that price is what really kept me from picking it up for a while. I ended up picking it up when uh, there was a 20% off sale. And still, I was thinking, man, that price is still kind of high. Uh, but I went ahead and got it, and I am very happy that I did. There are so many things about this knife that are really cool. Now, as you can tell, it's in uh, smooth black micarta. You can see the, see the grain in that micarta going on. Really nice looking. Um, I believe it's nickel silver pins, a nickel silver shield. I think these are uh, brushed stainless steel uh, bolsters. You do have a lanyard hole in the, bol uh, in, the, in the butt end of the knife. I believe it might be a stainless steel backspring. It also could be D2 tool steel, I'm not sure. Do have the brass liners going on and it's full brass liners going on. Uh, and then um, you have the blade, which is in D2 tool steel as well. Uh, and really nice finish there, you can see that. Now, the closed length of this is one of the things that might put a lot of people off on this right to begin with, because we're talking about a serious pocket full here. This thing is six and an eighth inches long in the closed position, so six and an eighth inches. And that's kind of big. Um, this is the Marbles um, uh, swing guard, which is a more traditional size, which is about the same size as your Case Cheetah. Notice how much smaller that is compared to the Rough Rider Reserve Swish. We're talking about a big knife, and it is also a heavy knife, so... Um, Definitely something that would have been a little more um, appetizing to buy if it came with a belt sheath instead of a metal tube, in my opinion. But in any case, the cool thing about this is when you open it, you have the swing guard, you see it there, right? Swing guard. Now watch when this swing guard, and that's the half stop, watch when this swing guard pops into place. You see that? there is absolutely no movement whatsoever on the swing guard. It locks in place. Um, compare that to the marble swing guard here. And you see what I'm talking about. See how that moves? And a lot of people complain about that. It's still safe, but you have that movement on there and a lot of people don't like that. Case Cheetah also has movement on it, which a lot of people do not like. This thing, though, it is rock solid. That is, that's like it was built to be in there. And one of the reasons it does that is if you notice, see how you got that? Well, you don't. I, I don't know why. I guess it's just the way it's cut. See how it's rounded there? Man, and then you drop it down. 
doesn't move here like it doesn't here. But the cool thing is when you open it, it just whoop, boom, and it's there. It's not going anywhere. You don't have to worry. Uh, and that's the amazing part about this. I look at that, I open it over and over going, wow, it's stuck. It doesn't move. Got a very strong lock on the back too. This is a very positive lock. Um, blade opens easy enough. There's, you know, the pull is not very heavy. Probably a four or five on the pull. Doesn't matter, you've got a really strong lock and it locks in place. You got the swedge up here. The one thing that uh, put me off a little on this to begin with is this cutout here. Um, it is only on this side, it's not on both sides. And I'm not sure if it was meant to be a, uh, a pull or not, like you got the uh, match striker pull up here. Was this also supposed to be a pull? And if so, why such an odd shape? Um, that was one of the things that kind of uh, was off-putting to me a little bit about it. I just don't understand this quite. It almost would work as like a, um, as a shackle key if it was cut all the way through the blade, but it's not cut all the way through the blade. I would almost like it better if it was completely gone or if it was cut all the way through the blade. And if it was uh, cut all the way through the blade, then I don't see a need for the um, the uh, uh, match striker pull up here. That match striker pull, matter of fact, could be gone no matter what. And then I would not have nearly as much problem with this. But it's, um, you know, it's kind of an odd looking pull for the knife. But let's close it back up. You can see here, you definitely have plenty of space to grab it here. Matter of fact, I find it easier to grab the blade here than to get into the match striker pull. Obviously, you got better leverage all the way up front here. But the pull even here is not bad. If you're pulling down here, it's more like a five or a six. Down here, it's or it's in that four range. It's a, a much lighter pull up here than you have down, down here. And that's, you know, the act of the fulcrum back here. You know, basic physics, I guess. But um, you can see there, the knife does favor a little bit the, uh, the back side of the knife. But there is no... Um, hitting or anything like that. It's definitely not rubbing. And you have a good uh, stop pin down here. So you do not have any kind of um, uh, blade wrap going on. Stop pin catches it right there. Uh, it's just a really beautiful knife. Um, probably the biggest drawback that most people would have for it is the price. And second is just the size it is a really big knife but it is comfortable in the hand you've got a lot to grab onto uh, and you know if you're looking for something uh, a folder that has you know a good size blade it's you know, talking almost four and a half inches on that blade and the cutting edge is the same really as the overall length of the blade or almost, I mean, you're losing a quarter of an inch maybe. So definitely like four and an eighth inches of cutting edge on the knife. So it is definitely a big one and a lot of handle there too. Um, and that might be one of the problems I think that some people would have is that you have such a big handle for the knife. Um, and that's one of the things that I would like to see them change on this. I would love to see them well, not change on this. I, I would love to see this knife continue, but I would love to see them incorporate this front portion here and this blade onto the marbles um, safety hunter that they have, the, the safety folding hunter with this back portion here. Could you imagine this knife with this blade? Oh, this moves. But could you imagine if it had the guard that locked like that on this knife? And the blades are about the same length. See there? About the same length. And then when you fold this up, this knife has a more uh, normal size handle.
for the uh, user. You know, you got a handle that's right around four inches. It feels good in the hand. Yeah, the bump is a little um, in a weird spot, but you get used to that pretty quickly. And it does uh, lock the blade closed, so that's pretty cool too. Uh, and then when you close it, and this is the interesting thing. So this is this knife closed. Now let's close this uh, swing guard, the swish. It's only marginally longer than the swish. Um, but when you're using it, it's a little bit shorter, almost two inches shorter. So that's a plus side on it. Another knife, um, this is the, the closest other Rough Rider Reserve I have in size uh, is, uh, is the Sabic, which is still by far my favorite Rough Rider Reserve. Um, and you see right there the difference in size. This one comes in um, just around five and an eighth or five and a quarter inches long as opposed to six inches. So you can see they're a good full three quarter inches longer but because of the way the knife is designed blade lengths are essentially the same um, when I measured it the Savic had a blade length that was about an eighth of an inch longer but a cutting edge that was identical to the uh, swish so if you're looking at cutting edge on these two knives, they're the same length. So, um, this one, you know, you're paying um, about $10 more for this knife than the Savic. And the main thing you're paying for is this wonderful guard and about six, uh, well, about three quarters inches more knife. And also all the uh, intricacies of getting a, a lock back into this knife. Um, it's just a beautiful knife though. I really do like it. Did I need it? No. Um, was I hesitant to buy it? Very much so because of the price. But at the end of the day, am I happy to have it? It's, it's a great knife. Um, it's a wonderful knife that uh, has entered my collection. I would love to see it shrunk down to a more modest size uh, swing guard. I think a lot of people would love to see this knife in a more modest size. You know, something that was maybe five inches long or four and a half inches long closed. But when you do that, you're gonna end up with a shorter blade. I also still think it would look really good if they turned the swish into like the uh, Marvel Safety Hunter. Um, I'd also like to see this with a lockback, so we have that going too. In any case, um, <laughs> that's my thoughts on the Swish. I'm really glad I got it. What I'm going to do with it, I just don't quite know, but I can picture myself using it if, for nothing else. Just to, uh, man, I could probably use this to, <sighs> in the kitchen for cutting up uh, large chunks of meat and everything else. You could probably... <laughs> I can picture somebody saying, hey, that's my new hunting knife. I can really see that. Anyway, with that said, I'll let you go. Uh, that's my thoughts on the Rough Rider Reserve 019 Swish. A pretty cool knife, but it is going to cost you a bit.
Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.